A ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second. The distance the ball is from the ground is given by d of t, where d of t is the distance in feet and t is time in seconds. For part a, at what time does the ball hit the ground? Well, the ball hits the ground when d of t is equal to zero. Let's first take a look at this graphically. d of t is equal to zero along the horizontal axis. So notice how d of t is equal to zero at t equals zero as well as at t equals six seconds. Well, t equals zero is when the ball is thrown upward and therefore the ball hits the ground after six seconds. To answer this question algebraically, we set d of t equal to zero and solve for t. So let's also do this. If we set d of t equal to zero, we have the equation zero equals 96t minus 16t squared. To factor the right side, we factor out the greatest common factor, which is 16t. If we factor out 16t, we get 16t times the quantity six minus t. The product on the right is equal to zero when 16t is equal to zero or when six minus t is equal to zero. Solving for t here, we divide both sides by 16. Simplifying, we get t equals zero. Solving for t here, we add t to both sides, which gives us six equals t, or if we want t equals six. So again, t equals zero is when the ball is thrown upward, and t equals six is when the ball hits the ground. So the ball hits the ground after six seconds. For part b, when is the ball more than 128 feet above the ground? The ball is more than 128 feet above the ground when d of t is greater than 128, and since d of t is equal to 96t minus 16t squared, to answer the question, we need to solve the quadratic inequality 96t minus 16t squared greater than 128. But let's first take a look at this graphically. If we graph the function d of t, and then graph d of t equals 128, which is graphed in red, notice how the blue graph is above d of t equals 128 here, when t is between two seconds and four seconds. And we do not include t equals two and t equals four because that's when the distance is exactly 128 feet and we only want to know when it's greater than 128 feet. But again, let's also solve this algebraically. Let's first set this equal to zero by subtracting 128 on both sides and also write the terms in descending order. Let's write this as negative 16t squared plus 96t. And then if we subtract 128 on both sides, we have minus 128 greater than zero. The first step in solving a quadratic inequality is to solve the related equation, which in this case is negative 16t squared plus 96t minus 128 equals zero. The greatest common factor on the left is 16. But let's factor out negative 16 so that the t squared term is positive. If we factor negative 16 from the left, we have negative 16 times the quantity t squared minus 6t plus eight. And this does factor further. t squared is equal to t times t. The factors of positive eight that add to negative six are negative two and negative four. So we have t minus two and t minus four. t minus two is equal to zero when t equals two. Or t minus four is equal to zero when t equals four. So these are the values of t where the height is exactly 128 feet. And therefore we don't include these values of t in the solution. And therefore we plot them as open points on the number line. And now we test each interval to see which intervals are true. On the left, let's test t equals one. Let's see this inequality here so that we can compare it to zero. If we substitute one for t, we have negative 16 times the square of one plus 96 times one minus 128 greater than zero. The left side simplifies to negative 48, which is not greater than zero. And therefore this entire interval is false. And now let's test t equals three for the interval in the middle. For t equals three, we have negative 16 times the square of three plus 96 times three minus 128 greater than zero. The left side simplifies the positive 16. Positive 16 is greater than zero. This interval is true. 
the mouse test the interval on the right, thus test t equals 5. So t equals 5, we have negative 16 times 5 squared plus 96 times 5 minus 128 greater than 0. The left side simplifies to negative 48 again. Negative 48 is not greater than 0, and therefore this interval is false. So the interval that is true is the interval in the middle, which is our solution. The solution is the interval from 2 to 4, not including the endpoints. As interval notation, we have the interval from 2 to 4, because we don't include the endpoints, we use parentheses. Or as a compound inequality, we have t is less than 4 and greater than 2. Let's also state the solution as a sentence. The ball is more than 128 feet above the ground between 2 seconds and 4 seconds. And again, we can verify all this by looking at the graph. The ball is above 128 feet between two and four seconds, and again, the ball hits the ground after six seconds. I hope you found this helpful.